For years, the gently flowing river Okora has supplied the Agoro irrigation scheme with water, giving life to the thirsty farmlands in Agoro sub county in Lamor district. Located some eight kilometers away from the South Sudan border, Agoro was once regarded as the northern food basket, supplying northern Uganda and parts of South Sudan with abundant food. But today, it has become a shadow of its past. Locals here are now grappling with food insecurity due to low crop production resulting from the failure by the irrigation scheme to supply enough water into the farmlands. Napogo, 27-year-old mother of four, is one of the thousand farmers affected in the situation. <laughs> The Uganda government has been rehabilitating the Agoro irrigation scheme at the cost of 6 billion Uganda ceilings since last year by elevating it from the use of open canals to hydraulic methods to ease access to water to cater for the increasing population. The first rehabilitation was completed in 2013 at 27 billion ceilings, but Thomas Upora, the scheme superintendent, cited defects in the scheme cannot allow easy flow of water into the gardens. The canal was too deep where if the water to fill up that canal so you will find one line of canal can swallow most of the water. And the other side may be lacking water, the other side may receive little water because most of the water get drained within the canals and literally enter in the farmland. That's how it affected the farmer, the production went down. Compared to their local, uh, local arrangement before those days they were using locally. At the moment, some farmers, especially rice growers, have decided to relocate their gardens elsewhere. While rice requires a lot of water to grow, it fetches more money on the local markets than other crops, and it is one of the priority crops by the government for domestic consumption and export. But several farmers have switched from rice to less water-consuming crops such as maize, beans, eggplants, and cabbage. Yeah, tungulo. Other farmers whose gardens are located near the river banks have decided to switch back to the informal irrigation methods as they wait for the schemes to be completed as they struggle to adapt to the adverse effects of climate change. What you and P man any irrigation scheme for car for bola bola a work canal don't care for just like in Agoro, many farmers in developing countries like Uganda struggles to grow crops due to effects of climate change like the changing rainfall patterns. And farmers living near water sources often struggle to effectively water their farmlands due to lack of effective irrigation infrastructures. For Uganda, the National Irrigation Master Plan study conducted in 2011, as reported by the Nile Basin Initiative, projected that the hectares of irrigated land would increase by 33,750 hectares by year 2035. Uganda irrigated land has been increasing by an average of 37% per year since 1989. But as farmers continue to expand their land for cultivation, the demand for water for farmlands and energy requirements is also rapidly increasing amidst a growing population. At the Nile Basin, approximately 5.4 million hectares of land is irrigated for farming purposes, supporting more than 250 million people, according to the Nile Basin Initiative. Recent studies by the Nile Basin Initiative suggest that water harvesting technologies such as recycling and reuse of water, implementation of water deficit irrigation, and improving crop pattern can help save water while increasing irrigations.
Globally, Uganda ranks as the 10 most vulnerable country to climate change and the 35th less prepared to combat its effects, according to Notre Dame Global Adaptation Initiative Index 202 report. In Agoro, massive tree cuttings for timber and charcoal burning has been a problem and this has altered the microclimate and disrupted the rain cycle of the farming village, according to Yen mo mo no wan pou tonge ano kombene ge permatie population namba pa dano do dwongo ma don pou dano ene ria ma borwa kan pou le ge tiogi yen ti ge dul mo jo mo ma tie ma ge wa ma ka a chela chel ma ge wa ge tero kere a chela chel mo kana bene mo ka bon mo ge chero yero environmental scientists are advising farmers to adopt modern farming methods to maximize their production it's it's true we accept that there's been a change in pattern of rainfall we have little water shortage. The rains do not come at the right time, and when they come, it's little or sometimes you have extremes. Too much, too little. What can farmers do? It's not only farmers. It is the farmers, institutions, governments, and the likes. It's a collective uh, effort to see that we use water well, we conserve water and use it sustainably one of the things that um, farmers are doing all should do I could say on large-scale farms we need to still embrace irrigation to supplement what is there what else can they they need to venture into research for the like the institutions the government they need to do research on better crop types to suit what is already happening more research should be done to come up with crops varieties that can withstand either the too much or the too little or the moderate depending others are also urging farmers to adopt cost-effective measures for replanting trees amidst all this the farmers in agoro are already frustrated as the rehabilitation of the irrigation scheme is delayed local leaders in lamo district are also accusing contractors of failing to complete the projects on time for over one year when the contract was awarded to one of the companies by the time we had a meeting they had only accomplished 24% and this was very disastrous. We were scheduled to terminate that contractor from continuing with the work. But after consultations, we gave him stringent measures. I would like to urge my colleague who has taken over from me to put keen interest in this particular project. Because, because of climate change. Ministry of Water and Environment says it is unsure when the rehabilitation work will be completed, but they are urging the more than 10,000 farmers to remain patient. The problem is the, the rehabilitation is quite unique. The type of materials we are using is very unique, very brittle, can break easily. They are like glass. It will take time. It has to go through. For now, farmers like Joyce Aya have no choice but to wait as their suffering gets worse. This special report is done by David Ukema, John Okot, with generous support from InfoNile and Media in Cooperation and Transition in collaboration with the Nile Bashan Initiative with support from GIZ.